Today I'm going to show you what we have in our basement food storage. It is early mid-January right now with no plans to grocery shop again until the end of February. So what do we have on hand as a family of six? Maybe I'll give you a quick peek through other areas, but mostly I plan to just show you the dry goods. Because once we get into freezers and root cellars, it gets overwhelming. But maybe you want to see those. Maybe you want to be overwhelmed. This is the section that we call our grocery store. So we have ice cream cones that I got really cheap They're for a dollar and they're normally like nine dollars. So tortilla shell, uh, taco shells, tortilla chips, cereal, extra raisins, tortilla chips, ketchup, mustard, tartar sauce, maple syrup, lemon juice, mayonnaise, some hot sauce and HP sauce and Mary Reese's fancy pickles and barbecue sauce and Worcestershire sauce. Olives, I did not buy enough olives. Maybe that's because we just went on a Greek salad binge, but this should get us through pizzas for the next bit because not all of us like pizzas. Pineapple, tomato paste, coconut cream or coconut milk. Oils, soy sauce, some snacks, gluten-free pasta, crackers, both gluten-free and gluten-full. Gatorade mix, this is Marius's. Green tea, black tea, mint tea, coffee. I just opened a five pound bag of coffee. In the buckets we have, so this has gluten-free baking supplies like millet and tapioca starch. Here is herbs and spices, gallon jar of pickles, two gallon jars of pickles down there, white rice, bulk tea and herbals that was full mostly because we have a lot of dried mint which is why some ended up up here not sure why these totes are here buckwheat flour buckwheat flour beans and lentils hard red wheat tinkiata pasta which is in bags i just had a lot of it and i didn't want it all over the shelves it's a brown rice pasta that we really like gluten-free but it cooks up so good white rice so there's two buckets of white rice this is a seven kilo bucket of honey we have another one upstairs as well that hasn't been opened yet 10 kilos of peanut butter so that's like a fat gallon that's two and a half gallons 44 pounds of flour times two but my flour bucket upstairs is just about empty and there's two dozen ginger ale over there that mary's been working on i have canning jars elsewhere but there's some here too parchment and ziploc and coffee filters vinegar homemade soap that's a bunch of candles our vacuum sealer and the vacuum sealer bags and supplies now they're just homestead and supplies so over here are non-edible consumables we have toilet paper and paper towel up there we don't use a lot of paper towel so there's just one thing of that one thing of that sorry and then lots of paper towel and lots of toilet paper that is rendered deer fat which we don't use for eating but we use it for like candles and other things a chainsaw of course big jug of our favorite laundry soap and dish soap dishwasher detergent rinse aid yellow boxes magic erasers because i feel some nesting coming on steel wool wet wipes, diapers. I just ordered new baby size diapers. I gotta start stocking up on that sort of stuff. And I need to put these canning lids away. Slowly everywhere I go, if I see canning lids, I buy a few of them and I've managed to amass a good few dozen of them, which is nice. There's also um, pectin in here too. I just moved them from upstairs. I still have some upstairs in a drawer in the kitchen, but I just didn't need all of them in a drawer in the kitchen. We are very blessed with very full freezers. So right now they're not, they're organized, but the top layer is not very organized. If that makes sense because we laid things out. So a whole bunch of sausages. Oh, what happened there? Something leaked there. Bone and chuck steak leaked. All our sausages are layered on top because we did sausage making last weekend. But these are mostly Mary's two baskets of fish, like smoked fish and fish eggs. And those are herring eggs, I think. Um, jerky that Mary's made. 
This freezer is mostly all beef, though, and fish. Maybe it's got wild game. I honestly don't know what's in this freezer. I just know there's a lot of meat in it. I do know that this freezer is mostly chicken and pork. There's some grouse in there, some bear hot dogs, but other than that, it's chicken and pork. We obviously do not have a lot of chicken and pork and compared to red meat. Oh dear, let's see if we can get into this freezer. I hate when things are on top of my freezer. It's like a biggest pet peeve of mine. My family does not understand this. This is our fruit and vegetable freezer, which also has pork in it. <laughs> But these are all, there's very few store-bought ones. It's mostly all things that we have preserved or bought in bulk. Um, but obviously this pork needs to move from here. This is our bear freezer that also now has a lot of sausage in it. The bear freezer has this dry salami roll that we got made, which is, is really delicious. There's also a bunch of pepperoni under there. But again, all the sausages are on top right now. But heck, while we're at it, we might as well grab out a pack of breakfast sausage to have for breakfast tomorrow. Now, into the root cellar. Oh, it's dark in here. The root cellar was starting to get almost maybe a little not bursting. And then we filled it up again. So we have a case of grapefruits, oranges, apples. This is a tote of carrots that I traded a friend they're stored in sand that we're still working on. They're amazing. We restocked all our lard and tallow. And we also did a bunch of potatoes and a bunch of dried like beans that I canned. So there was some gaps, but I filled them all up again. I've showed in here before, but we got like peaches, applesauce, tomatoes. Oh, I did a bunch of broth as well. There's fish and jam is down there. Potatoes, apple pie filling, yeah, strawberry too. jam. Down here, I think actually that bottom shelf is empty. I kind of intended for Marius to put those boxes down in there, but it didn't happen. Um, garlic, onions, cheese wheels. Hey Mac, do you think you could go up to the beer fridge and get any wheels or big wedges of cheese? And bring them down so we can put them in here. Not the one I brought down, um, like anything vacuum sealed. Uh, you can bring down that plate too. Okay, there was a couple. I was uh, <clears throat> getting flack from Marius this morning about the fact that um, his beer fridge didn't have any space for beer <laughs> because there's too many wheels of cheese in it. So I just have to move them down here. I was just being lazy. I was being lazy because the beer fridge is closer to the kitchen. Um. So there's a few wheels of cheese in there. And then this is my milk fridge and it's got wheels of cheese too. I also forgot the root teller is a bag of sugar. Two different vinegars, noodles that we use for ramen and pad thai. There's two gallons of popcorn, baking supplies such as like baking soda, baking powder, that sort of thing. Chocolate chips, two different types of coconut, oats, nuts, full thing of popcorn, onion and garlic. Upstairs we have an upright freezer that has butter and homemade bread and homemade casseroles and freezer meals and spaghetti sauce and chili and that sort of thing all gets kept up there. If we do have things like pierogies and frozen pizza they are up there as well. That's like our pre-made food freezer. But we actually pretty much have no store-bought pre-made foods right now. I told Marius that before the baby comes, we could stock up on those if he wanted. Um, and he said he'd rather not have them. Mac brought down a few wheels of cheese. My wheels of cheese average from four to six pounds, depending on what size batch of cheese I made make. A four gallon batch makes about four pounds. Six gallon batch makes about six pounds. Some cheeses are higher, lower yielding. Parmesan is lower yielding, etc., etc. So think we're pretty good for cheese. We only have about a month before our main milk cow dries up and the other milk cow only gives enough to just keep us kind of in milk and yogurt. So I have a month to kind of figure out what we need and how much more butter we need to have stocked. I think I maybe only have about 10 pounds of butter in the freezer. 
So we can probably make like a bit of butter from Jessa, but not a lot. So it might just be like kind of butter rationing, which is fine. It's not Christmas anymore, so there's not lots of baking. We have lard. We can make pies and such with lard. We never lack. It's just what you need to get creative with. We don't keep a lot of food upstairs. We kind of just keep like a bit of what is open and ongoing because when I store extras upstairs, it gets too crazy too fast. So it just keeps it simpler if there's just all the extras are downstairs. And then we also know too, like if we need ketchup, we're not like digging through the cupboard up there. Like, is there ketchup? We know there's ketchup down here. Anyhow, there's roughly what is in our food storage at this point. There is some things we're trying to slightly up, not because we're preppers and not because we're scared of what's happening in the world, just because it's convenient for a large rural family to just have more on hand so that you have to buy it less often. Thanks, Sam.